The 100 point prep races are finally here. Two big ones in the Bayou and the Bluegrass, the Louisiana Derby and the Jeff Ruby Stakes. And they happen to anchor a $1 all graded stakes pick five at both Fairgrounds and Turfway Park. I'm Ed DeRosa and here to help me handicap these exciting races, president of Horse Racing Nation, Mark Midland. Mark, it's a long road to the Derby, but when we hit that 100 point to the winter mile marker, things get real. Yeah, and these are some great races, some tough races, and uh, it's time to make some money. I like it. Well, plenty of money to be had. Uh, we've seen it with the coast to coast pick five that first race racing does with the 15% takeout dollar pick five. Same variables in play here for the Bayou Bluegrass pick five. As you and I discuss, I, I think with these types of multi track wagers, you get less CRW involvement. Uh, maybe the money's a little less efficient because of the dollar minimum and unable to see into the next race with the will pays. I have to think, given the competitiveness of all five of these races, this one's going to pay big. Absolutely, yeah. These dollar pick fives, you want to get involved. Like you said, the computer players aren't, aren't in them. In a lot of cases, they're not allowed to. And uh, we've been seeing all winter, the coast to coast pays great. Um, and, you know, we expect the same here. So uh, get a partner. I've got one already. Uh, <laughs> kind of spread out the the risk and uh, fire away because this is going to pay very well. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you see the sequence on your screen now. It starts at uh, just about 5 o'clock Eastern with the New Orleans Classic. We're going to start where it ends, which is the Louisiana Derby. Get right into the, the big ones that people are excited about. And uh, this, again, 100 points to the winner prep race. One mile and three sixteenths. We lack the winner of the prep for this. The Risen Star Sierra Leone is going to go to the Bluegrass uh, and actually face the winner of the prep for the Ruby Stakes. Brad Cox sending that one to the Bluegrass as well. Uh, but still a great field of 12 here. I think we're going to learn a lot about how the Louisiana horses stack up with some shippers thrown in. And uh, no gimmies. Uh, I'm going to be narrow because I think with the dollar minimum, you have to be when you're deep elsewhere. But uh, this is a pretty tough heat. Yeah, it's really tough. Field of 12 at the moment and a uh, couple, you know, a couple ass nuisance in here that are tough <laughs> and uh, Pletcher Cox are coming from all over. Uh, one that kind of caught my eye was Kenny McPeak's Common Defense that ran a good second mm. to Timberlake at uh, Oakland. Uh, you, what are your thoughts on him? Uh, I actually have as a B, which I'll throw my grid up at the very end. But yeah, it looked like a solid step forward last out. And I, I've heard, uh, and the same could be said, I think, for Chad Brown's trainees. I've heard a lot of different chatter about which ones each trainer likes best. And Common Defense is one that's come up. Uh, you know, Kenny's had a pretty good Oaks and Derby trail this year, uh, including Mystic Dan winning one of the prep races. But Common Defense, I know he's a fan of as well. So that step forward last out. Uh, to me, I'd love to get live to him. I'll need some help elsewhere because he's not an A, but he's in the mix for me for sure. And who are your A's in the Louisiana Derby? I went with uh, Agate Road is is my top pick. Uh, when trying to separate these, uh, I was A, uh, encouraged that Todd Pletcher decided to target Louisiana because he cross-centered Agate Road and the Jeff Ruby stakes as well. And B, he just ran uh, the last race last out was the fastest of these. I'm a big believer in the Ragazin figures. Uh, he got a nine for that. The Risen Star uh, was in the low teens. So in terms of how he stacks up against the local horses, uh, the number was much faster. Now, repeating that is always a challenge as you stretch out. And that's part of the the gruel of the, the Derby Trail. But uh I thought what we saw last time was better than what we've seen from any of these. So I'm not sure about eight to one with Ortiz and Pletcher, but I think we'll get a square price. Uh, and Catching Freedom was the other one. I thought there were some excuses last out. And with Track Phantom in the 12, if I'm going to take any horse out of that race, I, I kind of thought Catching Freedom was the one I wanted. So those are my two A's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little similar to you there. Uh, I like Catching Freedom's race, so I'm going to use him as an A uh along with common defense would be my top choice on the outside and then i think as b's i'm going to use track fa phantom you know one of the favorites i don't want to get knocked out uh because of that and uh honor marie is one uh, that i've been following all along and it's just uh if he wins and puts it all together i don't want to not have you know have that so uh right. 
that's why I'm kind of looking at five ten over uh, twelve seven as my bees. Yeah, Honor Marie, I I have the same thought. Uh, there were some excuses going in, or I shouldn't say going in, coming out of the last. Uh, there was some chatter about uh, a work getting interrupted. Uh, he was working with Drip, uh, who outworked him from all accounts, but there were some other issues there. And then Drip, Drip went on to win his debut impressively. So I have him there with common defense, would need to be right elsewhere. But if I am, Honor Marie, not not one I want to get beat by. The only one we didn't mention that uh, I give a little bit of a look to as well is Tuscan Gold, uh, Chad Brown, who's uh, won a couple of these preps in not so fast fashion. Uh, Sierra Leone and domestic product, neither got great numbers. Uh, but Chad has them ready, and, and that's what's important. So uh, I thought he had a kind of a, a look to him at a decent price. You know, he's the type of horse with that barn uh, that he could have, you know, been an allowance race at odds on, but he's here. They need the points. But uh, mm -hmm. is a B for me at eight to one. I think he fits fine. Yeah. And you were talking about the uh, the Ragazins as, as something that you lean on. Uh, I've been, you know, we've been spending a lot of time on the Horse Racing Nation AI line. Our AI line has Tuscan Gold at about seventeen to one. Oh, and okay. has uh, Common Defense at two to one. Wow, two to one. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, the you, the last out for Common Defense was was better than I would say all of these except Daggett Road. Um, and then depending yeah. on what you thought of the trips and the Risen Star, you can maybe move up or down a few out of there. But uh, no, he he certainly wouldn't surprise me. And I mean that. You talk about a dollar pick five. I mean, yeah, six to one doesn't look like a huge price, but with these types of fields and knowing right. track phantom gets attention, you get live to him, you're you're gonna be in a spot for a score. Yeah, and and I'm glad you said that. You know, one thing we've noticed on the coast to coast, um, you know, even with like some of the races at Santa Anita, there might be six, seven, eight horse fields. Uh, you just beat the favorite and uh <laughs> this thing really pay it, it really pays well. And so uh I think Sunday's uh, paid five times the parlay, paid about $1,500 against a $300 parlay. So wow. uh, it does not take much yeah. on a dollar. Well, good to know. And uh, yeah, I don't think it'll, uh, it'll take much here. And I'm, I'm not, I think I might have one favorite that I'm bullish on, which I guess we're about to get to uh, with the Jeff Ruby stakes. Uh, right. The penultimate leg of this, uh, the also the penultimate leg of the uh, pick five at Turfway Park. Uh, but we're focused on the uh, the Bayou Bluegrass variety across both tracks. A uh, decent field. Uh, I do have fair odds for this one. I'll, I'll pop them up because that'll give people a quick look at the field as well. Uh, Circle P uh, could draw in because, as we noted, Agate Road going to fairgrounds. And uh, Triple Espresso was cross-centered as well. And Todd is hoping he gets in, so he'll need another scratch. Uh, okay. This, of all the five races we'll talk about, Mark, uh, unquestionably the one where I am bullish on the favorites. I am only using 310 here. And I recognize I say that even as they might be underlays in the wind pool. Uh, but for the purposes of this dollar pick five with that low takeout, I'll be in survive in advance mode if I get through the first three legs. And uh, it, it's just the two chalk for me. I just think they're, they're the best of this group. So uh, the 10 makes a lot of sense. Obviously, one of the stake at uh... Golden Gate, uh, what's the thought on the three? I'm just yeah, curious. lucky Jeremy, and, and I'm a little nervous. Uh, looked like a step back last out, uh, both just kind of reading the line class-wise. Uh, he won the prep for the Sunland Park Derby and then finished third uh, behind Stronghold. But uh, really, numbers-wise, uh, Stronghold ran pretty well. And on the curve, even of this three-year-old group, uh, I consider playing them in the in the Derby future wager that closed last weekend because, you know, New Mexico form doesn't get looked at as, as closely. Maybe uh, it's kind of admittedly lost track of time. I was in Las Vegas and mm -hmm. missed the opportunity, but I'm not overly bearish on that race just because it was out in New Mexico. And, yeah. you know, Mori has, has good numbers both at Turfway as well as shipping into Turfway. He's, you know, done it before. He used to be based on the West Coast. So mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of think there, there's something there. And, yeah, it was a step back numbers-wise, uh, Ragazin, but the win two back is good enough to compete here. And if he's – I don't think he's going to be 8-1 to one, as the morning line suggests, or I should say the, the fifth choice because he definitely won't be 8-1 to one with Agate Road out. Uh, but – 
I think he's the second most likely winner and, and don't want to get beat by him. Yeah, I, I like him as well. Um, I, I, I did want to use both the three and the 10. Uh, like he <laughs> is working with, uh, he's been working with Vote No, who is a, a nice stakes type horse that's uh, one over 400,000. So he's working well. Should take to the synthetic uh, based off of those workouts and by looking at Lucky. So I'm with you on the 310. I wanted to throw out two other prices to consider. Okay. Um, I'm gonna write him down. Otello for Christophe Clement <laughs> at, at 15 to one. Um, I think, uh, especially if there's a little bit of a pace develops, I think uh, he's closed pretty well at Gulfstream, and and maybe we didn't quite see uh, to the extent of his closing ability in the Holy Bowl because they all kind of came home fast. So I'd give a long look to the to the eight, and then also uh, the nine sees the gray. Uh, Dwayne Lucas. So second off a layoff, I uh, think he's run well at Oakland. So for me, I'm actually probably flipping. I might go eight, nine over three, ten. Uh, but I'm with you on the three and ten, and I may elevate them to A's as well. And then uh, I've got a sire stat for you. Okay. Uh, the triple espresso, uh, the AE. You said he, he may draw in. He's twelve to one. Uh, does look good on paper. Um, He's in Omaha Beach. Omaha Beaches are zero for 27 on synthetic, uh, including zero for 18 on a synthetic route. And then, you know, a lot of people like to compare synthetic uh, routes and turf routes. I'm not huge on that, but I agree that directionally they're the same. Omaha Beaches are one for 31 on turf wow. routes. So if you start putting those routes together, Omaha Beach is one for 49 on a turf or synthetic route. So from the 12 post, if he draws in, <laughs> I would lay off him. That's good to know. Yeah, that's not not great. Uh, and I mean, 12 to 1, you might say, well, it's a, but in a 12-horse field, uh, I mean, that that's pretty light in the, in the face of that number. So He's a nice-looking horse. So, I mean, yeah, never say never. But, uh, I mean, they're going to win more eventually. But Sure. Um, so yeah, not great, right. Bob, 149. <laughs> no. And, uh, I thought it was interesting. None of the 14 entered, uh, we know at least Agate road scratching, but I mean, just all of them entered none raced previously at Turfway. All their previous start, the last start was somewhere else, uh, which, which I thought was, uh, I mean, I was expecting some horse that it had raced at Turfway last mm -hmm. out to be in here uh, and plenty of uh, synthetic uh, debuts and lightly raced on synthetic. So uh, encourage, mm -hmm. and really for the whole Turfway card, uh, our sire report uh, at picks.horseracingnation.com uh, can be an invaluable tool uh, as you weed through that 12 race program at Turfway to, to find uh, the, mm -hmm. the right horses for the synthetic surface, which we are staying on. Uh, it's, the second leg of the Bayou Bluegrass pick five, the Bourbon at Oaks. And I was thrilled to read uh, the Alpine Princess is going in this spot uh, because I, I think she's opposable. I think two to one is way too light. And I'm actually really excited about my former neighbor's trainee, Tommy Drury. Uh, he has, uh, and now I got so excited that it was trial. Tommy's, what's its name? Seven trial. Trial, thank you. Uh, some I had a nurse in my head for some reason, uh, trial nurse, I guess, but yeah, trial, mm -hmm. uh, you know, th this is a trainer who has big numbers because in part, uh, he spots them well, he knows the condition book, he'll ship to Belterra, uh, he'll go to Mahoning or Mountaineer if need be. Uh, he, he wants the horses, uh, to run the best they can in the condition that makes sense. So for him to jump up here, uh, the numbers match up, and it just tells me she's doing really well. So I'm I'm bullish on giving that one a, a long look. All right, yeah, I'm with you on Alpine Princess. Um, I can't say that I love her in this spot, but um, there's not that much speed. So I think you know, especially if you're playing the pick five, that's not where you want to kind of get cute and, and not use a two to one favorite. Um, I was a little interested in uh, Kenny McPeak's uh, number six, Band of Gold. Uh, one big in the slop. Um, I think last race was a little deceptive. So if you kind of split the difference of the two, this horse can be competitive here. Um, preservationists should ru run well on synthetic. Um, and then also the five um, moving on up. So two That's for my two. My second choice. 
Yeah, two for two on the synthetic at uh, Gulfstream, you know, coming home really strongly, nice late pace. And uh, I think, you know, this is a horse you want to consider. And then also as a B, I'm looking at the 10 Everland, um, a little bit of an outsider, but 10 to one. Uh, well, we're, we're pretty similar. I'm seven, five, 10. Uh, I'm kind of forgiving the last in part because, uh, you know, tur Turfway, they run, especially like two to three year olds, uh, a bunch of mile races. Um, I'm not even sure if they do a mile 70 anymore, but mile and a 16th, they seem to reserve more for the four year old uh classification so mm -hmm. to me that this one by arrogate finally gets to go out to eight and a half instead of eight furlongs you know maybe the the 10 hole isn't the most ideal for that but i think there's an opportunity here for for her to move up at a nice price so yeah i i mean it, it's a gamble i mean i fully recognize uh trying to beat alpine princess and a few others uh with only three none of which are, are the favorite but I think this is an opportunity here in this race. So five, seven, ten for me. All right, and so we should uh, go back to Louisiana and finish up. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up the graphics so people don't get totally lost, but uh, maybe I will. There we go. Uh, been through the Oaks, Jeff Ruby Stakes and Louisiana Derby end it. Staying with the three-year-old fillies, uh, we'll go to the third leg of the uh, Pick Five, which is the Fairgrounds Oaks, and another one where we will have to. Uh, pay attention to scratches because accommodate Eva, who despite the 13 to one fair odds, uh, I would be interested in using because she's 20 to one on the morning line. Uh, but she's also cross centered uh, in a race earlier in the day against Louisiana breads. Uh, but uh, another situation, Mark, where, you know, the, the two to expect to take money, Tarifa and Intricate certainly makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure they're either or layovers, though. Uh, I'm willing to give Vivi's dream a second chance uh, off her three-year-old debut. And our pretty woman at, at seven to one, I, I think is going to offer better value than either of the two favorites. But certainly what we saw in the Rachel Alexandra, no one's going to be shocked if either Tarifa or Intricate run back and win this. Yeah, I, I think for the purposes of the pick five, I'm just going to take those two and uh, hope to get through this leg with the uh, <laughs> With the two favorites and so um you know like we were talking about earlier the pick fives uh for a dollar pay really well so uh might include another horse you know in the fairgrounds pick five or something like that but uh for me i'm just going to go five six and hope yeah no and that that's the when you you kind of mentioned it with alpine princess who i'm against enough that if i'm wrong and she wins it's just i'm fine being wrong uh but in this case you know a horse like trial who might be 10 to 1 uh, you know, she she could make your year if you connect the dots correctly. And then even if Tarifa ends up being the one that wins, uh, yeah, you don't want I don't want to miss this because trial one and I was you know boneheaded about Tarifa. So that's where to me the the multiple tickets is going to come into play. And if I'm right elsewhere, okay, yeah, I will have Tarifa, but um, I would say I'm not as excited about her is maybe stretching a little bit. Like I said, BB's dream, I think I can make an excuse for an accommodate. Eva ran great last time. I can understand if they want to go to the Crescent City Oaks, but at 20 to one morning line, I want to use her here too. Yeah, that's, I mean, she did run very well. Um, and then uh, we should say we're, we're going to have some uh, bet share tickets up on Horse Racing Nation uh, later in the week and on Saturday. So if you want to participate in some of the pick fives that are sort of ready to go for you and join uh, with Ed and I on the tickets. Those will be up, up later on the site. Yeah. Uh, look for those and social media, of course, as well. You see the X handles below our names and it all starts with the new Orleans classic. And right. uh, another situation with a cross centered horse is huge for me, Mark, uh, because if uh, touch upon a star, races here. Uh, I am going to single that Louisiana bread. He is entered in the stakes on closing day as well Sunday. Uh, but I just think, A, he won't be three to one uh, if he's here. But even at two to one, eight to five, 
uh, the, the numbers are just better than than anyone in this race, and consistently so. It's not like Accommodate Evo has the one fast number last out, and I'm willing to take a shot against you know some other consistent mm-hmm. state winners type. Touch upon a star is just faster, period, and I'm going to bet accordingly. Okay, yeah, no, I mean I I don't disagree. I, I'm a little concerned that best actor is potentially a little faster so uh touch upon a star could see more speed than he's he's ever seen before and and best actors you know sort of improving so i think i want to cover both of those the three and the nine and um i'm still kind of sniffing around with one of the closers uh maybe get uh something in there that could come off the pace a little bit um maybe money supply um i'm not sure it's uh, all right yeah. It's lawn mowing season. Can you hear? A little bit. <laughs> Not me mowing the lawn, but uh, yeah, that, that time. Uh, but more importantly, time for a big pick five. I'll throw my, my grid up real quick. We've uh, talked through the names. There's the numbers. Um, you know, pr- pretty straightforward in the A column. That's only 36 bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, that definitely gives me some latitude to to stretch to the B. And, and in fact, as we talk through this, um, you know, I do think Tarifa and Intricate both make sense as a B in the, the fairground Oaks, given who my A's are in the Bourbonette Oaks. None of those three are going to be favored. So, uh, right. and in fact, in Louisiana Derby, neither two of my A's are favored either. So, and, and the last call in TP, TP is your top pick. That's right. Yeah. And, that, and that's just, kind of more academic than anything uh, a top pick based on the price uh you know you you get to the race itself and you know if endlessly is the second choice behind lucky jeremy endlessly yeah. is absolutely my my better bet in that situation so it, it's board dependent but based on the line and i look at the ai line that hrn does uh that gives a great uh, projection as well to get you in the ballpark or how the betting might go. So th- this is what I'm thinking I'll be most excited about. All right. Can't wait. This is going to be uh, just a fantastic betting day with uh, dynamite cards on uh, at both fairgrounds and turfway. That's right. And if um, mine and Mark's uh, analysis is not enough for you, uh, you want a third opinion and want one through the uh, triple crown season and really every weekend of the year, uh, super screener as you covered and we have a great deal going now 77 bucks uh get you through all the the prep races and on into the kentucky derby so mike shuddy does a great job and uh, i'm i'm always keen to to potentially add in areas where i'm already against a favorite if, if he's on a price that i overlooked uh always appreciate his insight so check that out it's all available at picks.horseracingnation.com uh, let's win some money this weekend all right let's do it we get to uh 10,000 on the pick five maybe certainly half that oh it'll pay 5,000 absolutely yeah yeah no question so, about it all right let's go get it bring some money home good luck everybody